Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number 59. This week, I'm going to be talking about some new software I wrote for the camera axe, which will automatically auto calibrate a valve sensor. So I'm really excited about this one. I think that this is some of the cooler software I've written for the camera axe in a long time. The idea came up a few weeks ago. In the uh, forum, some people were complaining about how long it took them to get colliding drops. And now with this new auto calibration mode, I don't, I don't really see how it could possibly take people more than two minutes to get colliding droplets. And after a little experience with this menu, there's some advanced options that uh, let you sort of jump around a little bit. And, you know, I can reliably get colliding droplets in 30 seconds now. And, uh, I mean, that, that's really impressive. I, it used to take me maybe five minutes or something, and I was probably one of the faster people at getting colliding droplets working. And people would be afraid to move their setups because, you know, once they got it set up, they didn't want to change anything. Now it's, you know, 30 seconds, maybe two minutes at the most to get back to colliding drops. So you have no problems taking down your equipment and putting it back up. And uh, if you want to go and demo this at your photo club, now, uh, it'll be really easy to just sort of set it up and, and get into action and, and taking those colliding droplets. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoy this episode as much as I've enjoyed sort of writing this software. And like I said, I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. So, uh, let me give you some of the details now. So first off, let me show you what's changed in the software. It's not too much, but the uh, valve menu now has an additional page of options. The uh, first option is the auto calibrate. I'll just sort of skip over that one for now. Uh, number of valves was moved to this page because this is sort of like the overall options page. And I also added a new option that people have been asking for, which is to base the uh, flash delay off of the first drop instead of off of the last drop. So this is a, makes it a little bit easier to get to colliding droplets if you're doing it manually. Uh, with the auto calibrate menu, that's not so important anymore. Uh, if you switch this to no, it then goes back to the uh, mode that you used to have before, which is much better for making videos of the uh, colliding droplets. Uh, on this menu, I added a start offset for valve one that didn't used to exist. It's not strictly necessary, but uh, it makes everything orthogonal and uh, it is a little bit nice if you have a lot of different uh, valves. If you only have one valve, you'd always want to just leave that at zero. And then everything else is the same. And you only see the additional menus pages if you have more valves turned on, just like before. So. Now let me go into the auto calibrate. So all you do is you turn on this mode by hitting the select button like anything else. And it takes you into a sub menu where it sort of tells you that first off you're going to be waiting for the tallest splash you can get from a droplet and then you'll hit the select button again. Then you wait for a nice drop collision and then you'll hit the select button again and then all of the settings will be saved off to the uh, uh, standard valve menu and uh, you will be uh, ready to go and you should be able to reproduce that colliding drop photo that you had just taken in this menu. So you start this by hitting select and you can sort of see there's a number right there and that's basically the offset and that's so people can sort of see what's uh, the current offset is from the start position so it'll just keep incrementing and if I had this hooked up to the uh, valve and camera then end flash then you'd sort of be seeing that the drops are sort of incrementing and stuff but uh, before we get to that I want to show you that you can um, use this up arrow to move sort of back in time. If you hit that a few times, you'll see this 35. We'll jump backwards now to 15. And that's sort of what was just taken. So you can sort of skip around. And this is sort of a more advanced feature. Now it's going to skip way forward in, in time. Uh, so that you can quickly arrive at your uh, drop, uh, sort of at a good state. 
Uh, it's sort of more advanced. It just lets you arrive at a good state more quickly once you uh, know what you're doing. To start off with, I would not use these up and down arrows. I would just let it sort of reach its good state. And uh, I guess if you go past uh, the optimal state, then you could use the up arrow a few times to get back before it. And then um, once you hit a good state, you hit select. And then... <clears throat> You'd have a second round, and you'd hit select, and whoops, and then it'll exit the menu. So remember, the first round of drop, so you hit select once, and now it's just telling you what to do. You hit select again, and now it's going to be creating these droplets and taking pictures of them, and the splash is, it's going to start out with no splash. And then there's going to be a sort of a bar of water that uh, you'll be seeing. And when that reaches its maximum height, you'll push select. And now it'll start um, over again. It'll keep that bar of water sort of where it was. And a second drop will start coming down. And when that second drop hits this first drop, it'll create a splash. And when you see that splash and you like how it looks... You push select again, and you'll be done. Now let me uh, show you how this works in, in when it's connected up to the uh, actual apparatus. So here's the setup I'm using. All right, here's the camera. Over here's the flash. The valve sensor. And down here's where I'm dropping the water into. Some other tools that I like using are a little uh, lamp for my head so I can see in the dark. And uh, this was mentioned on the forums. This is actually a really awesome idea. So uh, it's always been sort of a trouble to get uh, the droplets hitting exactly where you want and making sure that they're focused right. So by putting a screw there and using the purge button on the valve, you can make sure everything's lined up exactly like you want. And then you go over to your camera and uh, you focus it on the uh, upper part of that screw because that's where the splash is going to be. You can make sure that it's in focus. I usually use an aperture of around uh, 16 or so. And you set your camera to bulb mode. And then over here, on the camera axe, the first port here is where your camera goes, and it, it has to be in there for the uh, auto calibration to work. It is optional, but auto calibration won't work, um, so you'd have to manually calibrate. So the new menu that I've been talking about um, requires sort of the flash, the, the camera being plugged in. The second one is the uh, flash cable. And then down here on sensor one, that's where the valve is plugged in. So we'll just turn it on here. Usually what I do is I just pull this back here. So I'm sort of watching this and my camera at the same time. And uh, I'm in the auto calibrate menu. So I just hit select and then I hit select again. Oh yeah, I have to uh, make sure my flash is ready. Okay. And now, I'm going to hit select for the second time. And now, things are going. You can see? Oh, the screw's in there. <laughs> Anyways, um, I wait for the... Uh, Droplets to sort of create the the column. And once that looks good, it's not going to work because the lights are on right now. I'd have to turn the lights off. But um, once, once the column of water looks good, I'd hit select. Now it's entering the second mode, and you see that the uh, little number went back to zero when I did that. And now I'd wait for it to uh, create a nice splash drop and if I wanted to I can use the up and down arrows to sort of more quickly get to it but 
Um, generally, it only takes about, you know, 10 or so shots. And that should be under two minutes. So now if the drops were making nice collisions, I'd hit select again. It takes me out of that. And uh, it will have modified the values in these menus to sort of repeat the droplet that was last, the, the shot that was last taken. Um, and that's pretty much it, you know. It's how to get great colliding drop shots in, in under two minutes. So I think that this uh, auto calibration mode is really going to make taking these kinds of shots a lot easier for a lot of people. So I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, now I'm going to run through a, a sequence of uh, images to sort of show you what they actually look like when you're using this auto calibration mode so you know when to actually hit the select buttons. So right now there's really no column of water to speak of. Uh, the water droplet has hit the water but um, basically the water droplet is still traveling down under the water and now it's starting to form that column of water. And Once it looks like it's pretty stabilized then that pretty much means that it's at its maximum height. So I'm, this would be when you'd want to hit the select button. And now we're in the, the second mode where it's trying to collide the second drop. And you really can't see the second drop. If you're actually looking at what's happening now, there's a drop beyond the uh, field of view of the camera. And now you can see it's entering and it's colliding. So now it looks pretty good. So I'd uh, suggest hitting the select button again. And then those options are saved off to the uh, main valve sensor menu and you can reproduce a drop that looks kind of like that every time and and you'll be set up with good values to start with and now you can go and tweak them in the regular menu a little bit but this gives you a really good starting point to uh, take uh, photos of colliding droplets thanks for watching